message. There are two titles. One is in English. Then I've got a Hebrew title. So the title is in itself, uh, kind of, it's called Line of Confusion and Stone of Emptiness. Line of Confusion, Stone of Emptiness. And then we have this. This some of you might know. The next word. Tohu, Tohu, Wa, Bohu. Tohu, Wa, Bohu. Okay. Now, this are very identical. These words in Hebrew and what I put out as the English word. But I wanted to know that I'll be approaching this from two angles. One from a national, including Israel, and two from a creational aspect. So one from national, and the other one is creation. And it's going to be very profound. May the Holy Spirit help me navigate and touch the areas that need to be touched. God has a word for us this afternoon. Amen? Can I get... Sometimes I want to see we're excited even before we get the word. Can we have that? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So let me go into the word. You know, I want to turn your attention to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 34, verse number 11, where you see the first two lines, Isaiah 34, 11. Can we read from ESV? But the hawk and the porcupine shall possess it, the owl and the raven shall dwell in it. It shall stretch the line of confusion, that's the way we get the word, line of confusion over it, and the plumb line of emptiness. Okay, when you look at King James, can we go to King James, at least the last line. Line of con confusion and stone of emptiness. To understand this, some of you need to put on a hat where I'm going to take you into a construction site. To be honest, I do not have a certain understanding of how constructions take place here. Because most of the time it's scaffolding and I have not got to see them. But some of you know exactly how it happens. But there is an instrument that we, growing up in India, have seen it very often. I think it was a basic instrument that was used in all our Indian construction. And I'm trying to figure it out if that is the same here. Because this is a very ancient kind of a device and without which you cannot have the construction. So, what is the instrument that I'm talking about? I'll show it to you from an Indian context. Can we put that picture there? That's the instrument. Have anybody seen that? It's called a plumb line. Okay, I don't know if there is a different device. Now it's a digital world. I don't know if things have changed. But this is our cake. But this is standard. Okay? The modern thing would be something like that. This is ancient. That's the very scientific, precise plumb line. The word is plummet. It's a plumb line. So in this particular passage, what Isaiah is saying is talking about a plumb line, and that plumb line, the line is called confusion, from where you get the word tohu in the Hebrew, and then you have got the stone, which is emptiness, which is called bohu in the Hebrew. Okay, you get the word tohu and bohu, and I'll be talking about it in detail. It's going to be very very interesting teaching this afternoon, very powerful. But just know this, today as I was going through the passage, I found out something very interesting. Judgments and blessings are always connected to this plumb line. I repeat, judgments and blessings in the Bible in many occasions are connected to the plumb line. For example, God speaks to the children of Israel in 2 Kings chapter number 21 and verse number 13, I believe. 2 Kings 21, 13. I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plumb line of the house of Ahab 
and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. You know what God is saying? The same plumb line that I used to measure Samaria, I will measure Jerusalem with it. The same plumb line that I measured the house of Ahab, I will measure the house of David. And according to the plumb line, I will bring judgment to Jerusalem. So I wanted to know God has a plumb line with which he measures nations, with which he measures families, with which he measures lives. And the plumb line says the stones are in order. Everything that has to be in order is in order. Now what happens if the plumb line produces a certain sense of disagreement with the standard measurement and what comes out of it? Please listen to this. I want you to go to Isaiah 34, 11 again. Please listen. It's so interesting. You know, some of these creatures that I've mentioned, I don't even know how to say that because different versions have got different you know, creatures mentioned. But I'm going to speak about two variety of creatures. Okay? Number one, I want you to know that these creatures, most of them, some, you can read from ESV as well, all of them has got a standard feature. And what is that? They are creatures that enjoy seclusion. They are creatures that frequent marshy land and isolation. They love to be in seclusion. You know, these are creatures that don't mingle with others. So what is one of God's greatest curse based on the plumb line? That there will be creatures that enjoy isolation. And that's dangerous. Creatures that makes you feel that there's no sense of fellowship. It disconnects you and put you in a place of isolation. All these creatures talk about seclusion. And let me make this very clear. Of course, during the time of COVID and all that, some of us had to forcefully let ourselves into a place of time of seclusion. But remember, seclusion is not God's agenda. Fellowship is God's agenda. And the enemy wants to separate you, separate you, put you in seclusion, bring creatures that enjoy seclusion, the owl and, 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 and the porcupine. Because porcupine cannot mix with other creatures. Because it's got thorns. Okay? So these are creatures of you know, isolation. But I want to continue this, please. We are going to continue. Verse number 12. Can you read for me, ESV, please? Keep reading. The nobles have come down. Keep reading, please. Thorns shall grow with strong old nettles and thistles in its fortress. It shall be the haunt of jackals and a board of ostriches. You can see all these creatures talk about a place of seclusion, a place that is not visited, a place that brings a certain sense of isolation but dreadful isolation because it's all about the plumb line keep going and wild animals shall meet with hyenas the wild goat shall cry to his fellow indeed there the night bird settles and finds for herself a resting place i want you to know there are two words in hebrew which are not very common words with this creatures the first word is called the wild goat it's called a satyr and that's a Hebrew word, it's sair. And what does that mean? It is a demonic, it's called the devil. It's called the devil. Actually, that word means the devil. It's translated the devil. So you have got people in isolation, seclusion, and demonic manifestations happening. Are you with me so far? Demons are attacking. It's thorns and thistles. It's palaces now become like deserted place, all because of a plumb line. But the next word that I wanted to bring, which is the word that says, you know, uh, the owl next nest, which is another word which I found interesting. The word is called, 
it, it, it's called, uh, no, let me bring the word before that. Another creature that's been spoken, the word is, uh, you know, um, sorry. It's called Lilith in Hebrew. Now that is an Assyrian name. It's a demonic spirit, a female spirit that comes in the night. A seducing spirit that attacks men with sensual attacks and then attacks the children. So this spirit called Lilith is a spirit that will come to the house, according to Assyrians, and steal your children. Now I, I trust that you get the picture. You know, this plumb line, because some measurement had gone wrong, it has become now a fortress of demonic attacks, a place of seclusion, seclusion, a place of isolation, a place where nobody wants to even visit. And then in the night, spirits, demonic spirits are manifesting. And if there's anybody watching me today, having some experiences that connects your life with what I'm speaking, before this day is over, get ready for a divine intervention. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? I want you to know, can somebody at least try to project what kind of a thought you're having right now and make it connected to what I'm saying? You know, this is a situation where you cannot mix. You don't have the joy of fellowship anymore. It's creatures that prefer isolation that has now become your, your, your you know, inhabitants of your life. And then you have got demonic, specific kinds of demonic spirits. One, a spirit that dances in your family. Another one, a spirit that comes in the night attacking the men and taking the children away. That kind of a spirit. And I know God will not give me a message unless it is important for this hour. And get ready for a move of God. And the next one, the, the owl nest and lays and hatches. Now that word is absolutely wrong. Please don't get me wrong. That's, that's absolutely wrong translation. The word is a word in the Hebrew which means arrow snake. Arrow snake. You know what that means? In this particular place, you have got arrow snake. And, and the word is, in the Hebrew means, it coils back and then it strikes. And that's the reason it's called an arrow snake. It'll spring into your life. Are we springing forth today? Are we? Okay, let me tell you something. If God wants to spring forth, the enemy wants to spring forth. The word really is spring forth and attack you. But I'm here to say, you know, God has a powerful word of deliverance this afternoon. Some of you get ready. But what is wrong with this picture? This particular arrow in a snake which springs forth. It will be quiet till you reach there. It will spring forth and attack you as an arrow. But it's producing a lot of babies. The word there is, it's lying on one side and keeps on producing babies. How many of you have been in a situation where, you know, the attack kind of gets multiplied? The demonic powers are getting multiplied. It's like it's become a place where the devil is kind of reproducing himself. This is a situation, but remember this word. It all is connected to the plumb line. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Plumb line brought this upon this. It, this is a prophecy over Edom, by the way. It's for Edom. But what is the solution? Keep reading. Next to us. Seek and read from the book of the Lord. So let me tell you, the answer is always go back to the word. Which means that whatever has happened, happened to them because of the absence of the word of God. Now I want some of you to know the greatest antithesis and defense against demonic powers is the word of God. Can I get somebody who believes in the power of God's word? Praise the Lord. That's the answer to demonic intrusion. God says, go back to my word. Not one of them shall be missing. That means my word, if it says something, 
none shall be without a mate. That's interesting. Because when God said, I'll bring the jackal and, and the porcupine or whatever it is, it was, I will bring a mate. That means even for an attack, there's a mate. So if God says there's a mate coming, there's a mate coming. And God says it will not miss its mate. But I was so blessed to kind of go back and look at the scriptures where God gives a word to Noah. And how many of you know that was a supernatural act of God that he could get all the animals that needed to be in the ark coming with its mate. How many of you know among humans you can't get that kind of a Come on. How many of you have waited? The husband waits and the wife is still not ready. Or the wife is ready, the husband is not ready. But in Noah's ark, every creature is coming with its mate on time. That is supernatural. What I'm trying to say, and just like that God says, I will bring a judgment where one creature will bring another creature. But let me as a servant of the Lord, as your pastor and people watching me, if there's creatures of demonic you know, manifestation bringing another creature, I want that to be cancelled today and I want godly mates and godly associations to restart in the house of the Lord. Can somebody shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? We don't want one creature of the demonic in an origin to bring another creature all because somewhere your life has gone out of the word of God so seek and read from the book of the Lord not one of these shall be missing none shall be without a mate for the mouth of the Lord has commanded and his spirit has gathered them this is a key I want everybody to understand please somebody say yes how many of you know there are two things. This is a vision for our future, vision for our ministry, vision for Tammy. And I've been saying this over and over again. The word of God will speak and the spirit of God will gather. Oh, you didn't hear that. The word of God will speak and the spirit of God will gather. You didn't hear that. I said God's word will give you a promise and the spirit of God will gather that. Come on, hallelujah. If you believe the word of God and the spirit of God will work together, can you give the Lord an amen in the house of the Lord? Some of you say, God, you've given me a word, but how will this all come together? You don't have to worry about it. If God gave you a word, and if you obey and you receive that word, the gathering is not your business. The gathering is the business of the Holy Spirit. So as a servant of the living God, I stand here with tremendous unction of authority. And I'm declaring it over you. Just like the devil is gathering spirits and creatures, you know, under a judgment for God, for, for, both, for those who believe God, for those who receive the word of God, the Holy Ghost is gathering your miracle, gathering your healing, gathering your promises. Everything that needs to come together will be brought together, including the mate that God has to give you. So in this church, I believe you have heard it so many times and so often. Is there somebody who can attest to this truth that whenever God says a word, the Holy Ghost will gather? If you really believe that, can you make a sound that will be a platform for our future? So just know there's a parallel going on, a contrast. Satan is bringing all his creatures and taking into isolation, attacking in the night and bringing in that stupid attack in the night and dreams and children being affected and all kinds of, and producing more snake, arrow snake and all that. On the other hand, you just go to the word, carefully receive the word and the Holy Ghost is gathering everything that you need for the future. If you believe God's word will cancel the plan of the enemy. Look at that. Some of you need to buy hard this. You know, for the Lord has commanded and his spirit gas has gathered them. Next verse. That's the end of it. 
He has cast a lot for them. Okay, this will fever on generation to generation. So far you understood. It started with a plumb line. And the plumb line showed that they have gone out. The stones are sticking out. It's not right. And the judgment comes. And when the judgment comes, demonic infestations take place. And today, as a servant of the living God, standing on the word of God, let me say, I don't want anybody watching me ever to have an infestation of those creatures. In your house, it's not the jackal and, and the owl crying, the, the sound of melancholy, the sound of loneliness, the sound of depression, the sound of disappointment, the sound of discouragement. For the Bible says, there shall be the shouts of joy in the tent of a righteous one. Come on, somebody, can you receive the word today? Your house will not be an infestation of demonic power. Your house will be a house where God's presence is there, where there are miracles and there are angels covering your house. There shall be angel camp around your family that should be a house but where does it stand your life is built on a plumb line according to the word of God if you are happy about it can you say yes in the house of the Lord somebody needs to say I want my life to be built on the word of God come on are you with me so far now let me go to another passage that will kind of accentuate this truth even more. It's found in Isaiah 28 and verse number 10 onwards. Isaiah 28, 10 onwards. Isaiah 28, 10. This is to the children of Israel. God is speaking. He says, how does he do that? He says, it will be precept upon precept, precept upon precept, Line upon, and by the way, that word line there is the same word in the Hebrew for plumb line. Line upon line, here a little, there a little. What does it mean? It means, you know, some scholars have said this, and I, I tend to agree with it, you know, because that makes a lot of sense. What does it mean? It means, precept upon precept, it's like schoolmasters, the teachers, who instruct their children by making lines or marks for them, which they had to trace or imitate. So you draw a line, and the child has to draw on top of it. And that is the word precept upon precept, line upon line. And that is what God is speaking through Isaiah. So God says, all I want you to do, when I draw a line, you just have to draw on top of it. Is there somebody in this church who will say, my life will be line upon line. Come on, church. I know it was a tough message, but, but if you really want something deeper and your life built on the true word of God, can you at least say, say an agreement, amen, in the house? Lord, when you draw a line, I want to have line upon line, precept upon precept. I don't want to change it. I don't want to draw a different line. I want to stick with your same line. I want to confess what God is saying. I want to profess what God is speaking. I want to repeat what God is saying. Can somebody say yes in the house of the Lord? Let us be a church that all Honors God's word over and over and over again. But what happened to people of Israel? What happened when God brought the line? For by people of strange lips and for, with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to people. Why did they call it foreign tongue and strange? It's interesting. It's interesting. This is very, you have to read this in Hebrew. No translation can do justice to this. You know, when God was speaking through Isaiah, I will read that in Hebrew. It is two words. The word itself, sav means precept. Kav means line. Okay? This is how that word is translated. Sav, 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 kav, 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 kav. So prophet is coming and saying, tau, sav, tau, sav, kav, 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 kav. Only a Jewish man will understand what he's saying. Even to them, it doesn't make sense. So it looked like a stammering tongue. Come on. So what did they do with that, with that prophecy next to us? To whom he said, this is rest, give rest to the weary and this is repose, yet they would not hear. See, sometimes God speaks. He doesn't have to give you the whole blueprint. Tsao, 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 kav, 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 kav. And either you will say, yes. 
And God says, you'll have rest. You'll have peace. But they don't listen. All God is asking you, build your life line by line. When I draw a line, draw on top of it. When I draw a precept, have a precept on it. That's all what I'm asking you. So he uses this stammering kind of a broken. It's, it's fascinating when I read that. I had a sense of humor with God uh, when I read that. You know, can you imagine prophets coming and just speaking, standing in the, in the, in the marketplace and saying, tsao, 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 tsao. Calf, 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 calf. And, and if you receive that, you've got rest for your rest of your life. And it, which means line upon line upon line upon line precept upon precept. But they wouldn't. And the word of the Lord will be to them precept upon precept. Again the same word. Tsao upon tsao. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. There a little. That they may go and fall back and be broken, snared and taken. This is being, therefore hear the word of the Lord. You scoffers. You know what they did? When the prophet started to say that, they started to say, <laughs> funny. Can you imagine somebody started saying, here comes prophet Saul. Cow. They became amused with this. Let me tell you, when God speaks a word, let us honor God's word. They became scoffers. And they said, because we have said, we have made a covenant with death. Instead of obeying God, all God is saying, when I draw a line, you draw on top of it. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. They said, instead of that, we will make a covenant with death. And we'll make lies our refuge. And falsehood, we have taken shelter. People watching me, listen to this. Let's lift God's word. We don't want to be led by lies or falsehood. Let us be led by the truth of what God says. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation. A stone tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a pure form. You know, I said about an empty stone. When you break the plumb line, you get an empty stone. But when you obey God, you get a stone which is a sure stone, which is a foundational stone, which is a stone that will never put you to shame. I call that stone our precious Jesus Christ, the stone that is rejected by everybody. But let me tell you, he is not an empty stone. He is a stone that can build your life, build your future, build your family. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? in the house of the Lord. Let's give this stone a praise in the house of the Lord. Hey. And you will never run, go in haste. Next verse. I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies. Look at this. The entire history of God's dealing with Israel is connected to the Plumb line. So I asked the Lord God, what are you talking here? You know, I'm not saying sometimes we have made mistakes. Sometimes we have done things that does not agree with the plumb line. But can you tell the Lord today, God, fundamentally, foundationally, I want to be line upon line. If there's anybody who wants to say, my future is going to be built on the word of God. Nothing but the word of God. Only such people make a noise. <laughs> Come on church, this is a profound word. It's a very powerful word. But then the Lord told me something today. There's an alternative, not alternative, a contrast to the story. Plumb line. You know, one plumb line brought the devil but I'm going to show you another plumb line that brought the Holy Spirit. And that is a message for our church. In the days to come, because the word of God was lifted up. Because of God being honored to the word, mark my words. In the days to come, there's going to be a release of the Holy Ghost. 
there's going to be a move of the Spirit of God. Can I say some people who will just step into this church and get touched by the power of the Holy Ghost because God is moving in this place. If somebody can believe this, can you just give the Lord an agreement? Amen. In the, this is a prophetic word. Oh, get ready. Oh, can I speak over somebody right now? The Lord is telling me to tell somebody, you will be a man carrying not the devil, not the dragon, not the arrow snake, not the power of a demonic spirit. Wherever you go, you will have the Holy Ghost walking with you. You will have the presence of God moving with you because your life is built on the word of God. Can somebody say yes in the house of the Lord? Because the Holy Ghost only agrees with the word. Oh, you didn't hear that. I'm very, very careful in my life that if something is being committed to my care, I don't want to draw a different line. I don't want to. As by the grace of God on me, that's my desire. I can't boast about how successful I am, but I don't want tohu bohu, meaning confusion and emptiness to be my life. Let me tell you, as a servant of a living God, I stand here in public and I declare nobody watching me will have a life which is defined by confusion and emptiness. Your life will not be a confused life. Your life will be a fruitful life. Can somebody say yes in the house of the Lord? But we need to bring back the plumb line. Oh, somebody give a Lord. Huda Radha da Shante. But let me tell you this. Where do I see the next plumb line? We find that Zechariah chapter number 4, verse number 10. Zechariah 4 10. Zechariah 4 10. For whoever has despised the day of small things. Now how many of you know that's kind of natural? You've got a small thing, you despise it. But God is telling, be careful when you do that. Let me tell you, God's ministry or God's blessing is not based on how big the capital investment was. How big the original infrastructure was. Come on. He said, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Let me tell you everything that God did on this planet. However big they were, it started with small things. But God says, don't despise it. Small things shall, for whoever despises a day of small things shall rejoice. Now instead of saying it's so small, you're going to rejoice. Now can I release this over your life? Maybe I've got a little, little finance now. Maybe I've got a little health now. Maybe I've got a little thing that not much connected to how big the promise of God over your life is. It, it doesn't, it fails in comparison. But can I say today, start rejoicing. Oh, oh you didn't hear that. I said start rejoicing. Somebody start rejoicing. Somebody start rejoicing. I came all the way from the presence of the Lord to say start rejoicing. Instead of despising it, instead of saying how small it is, start rejoicing because something big is about to come out of it. Can somebody shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? Oh, get ready, get ready. Oh, this is a move. This is, a, this is becoming, I didn't expect this to become a revival meeting, but this is about changing in color and texture as into a miracle revival meeting. And I'm grateful for that because God's people are receiving the word. Let me tell you, if you believe, even though it's small, I can rejoice. And I'll tell you why you're rejoicing. I'll tell you why you're rejoicing, why you can rejoice. Can I get an agreement in the house of the Lord? Can somebody say yes in the house? Amen. Can you receive it right now? Can you say, God, in the based on what you've spoken, based on the promise of God, I don't have much enough. My, my heart and instinct tells me this is not something that is relevant or significant, but I'm not going to despise it. Instead of that, I'm going to rejoice. Let me tell you, time has come for some of you to rejoice. Now, I heard it loud and clear. Some of you to rejoice. Can I hear, in spite of what you are sensing, where your life is, what your family is going through, can somebody start rejoicing in the house of the Lord today? Because God says, rejoice. Now, why should you rejoice? It's not based on what you have today. 
It's not based on how big they are. It's not based even on the relevance of it in comparison to the old Solomon's temple. Oh, goodness, no. Let me tell you, it's only based on one thing. Because they shall see the plumb line. If you know that your life has got a plumb line, your promise on a plumb line, based on what God has spoken, you don't have to have a frown on your face anymore. You don't have to sit there as if you're tired and weary. Can you start rejoicing because your life is aligning with the word of God? Can Now, can I get a witness here? Your miracle is going to happen soon. Can you start rejoicing because your life is not based on what you see today. It's based on the plumb line. The plumb line. It's the word of God. I, I, I have to say this. I'm sensing an anointing on my body. It's like there is a flood, like a flood of of. of, of electricity on this platform right now. Something beautiful is happening. God is telling me to tell you, if you believe my word, if you say my life has got nothing big enough to show off, but there's a plumb line, and that plumb line decides my future, and that plumb line is a plumb line of heaven, if you really believe that, can you for once tell the devil, my life is not going to be a habitation of demonic powers, it's going to be a place where we're going to see the glory of God descending into the house of hey can somebody who believes your house will be a house where God is going to move make a noise in the house of the Lord it is not the place for demonic you know if there's anybody in this place who get paralyzed through what you call paralyzed paralysis dreams Dreams that chocks you, dreams of attack, dreams of snake, dreams of things happening against children, or nightmares, or whatever it is. I come here to tell you tonight, this afternoon, just because of the plumb line, just because of the plumb line, you are getting a deliverance right now. You are getting a healing right now. You are getting a miracle right now. Can somebody... Oh, this is a revival Sunday. Can somebody give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord? There is a move happening in the church. The attack of your life is now being cancelled in the name of a Lord. Hey, pray, pray. You know, I have preached on it probably a dozen times in crusade, conferences, pastors meeting. But I never understood they're rejoicing just because of the plumb line. There's one plumb line which brought judgment on Edom. A plumb line that brought demonic activities. Let me tell you today, the Lord has unshined me on this day to announce as a day of special regard from the presence of God that this hour, this moment, your life will not be a life of seclusion, of depression, of disappointment, of discouragement, of demonic activities. Instead of that, it will be a place where the glory of the Lord is filling your life. Hey, 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 somebody give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. It is a place. It's not based on the small or a big or whatever it is that you see at this point of time. It's based on one thing. If I had a choice, I would have brought a plumb line from somewhere. Because it has to enter your mind and never forget for the generations to come. Plumb line. But what is special the plumb line? These, these seven, what is it talking about, these seven? Oh, I'll tell you what it is. Can you read chapter 3, verse number 9? This plumb line has got something on it. This plumb line, 3, 9. For behold on the stone that I've said before Joshua, on a single stone with seven eyes. Huh. And then it says a plumb line has got seven eyes. What is that? You know, in, eyes, in Revelation 5 it says, the seven eyes are the seven spirit of God. Whew. Oh, you didn't hear that. Why seven? 
Because according to Isaiah 11, chapter number 11, verse number 1 and 2, the Holy Ghost has sevenfold manifestations. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of truth, spirit of understanding, spirit of fear of God, spirit of knowledge. Come on. The sevenfold. And all that seven, fullness of God, that is on Jesus Christ, is now on the plumb, on the stone. Can you imagine the line with the word of God and the stone, Holy Ghost? If you have got your life, which is precept upon precept, the line is according to the word, and the stone is the blessed Holy Spirit, how can you sit quietly but rejoice? If you have got the word and the Holy Ghost, start rejoicing. Now you understand why you're rejoicing. That's your treasure. That's your blessing. That's the anointing. Can somebody say yes in the house of the Lord? I want to say something right now, which is now personal to me. By the way, this particular word, I didn't know this when I went looking for it, studying and preparing. I didn't know that. But towards the end, I came to realize this particular word was prophesied over me twice. Twice. I didn't understand it at that time. And I think I made Auntie Molly hear, hear it once. But plumb line and the future of the church is to do with a plumb line. I didn't know that. But I wanted to know one thing. This story has to be read in context. You have to go home and read Ezra. How many, it was very difficult for them to come back and build the temple. But God said, do it. But how did they build it? Isaiah, uh, Ezra 5, 1 and 2. There was such attack, there was Sambalat, Tobiat, and all those people attacking them. There was such demonic power, and they even wrote a letter of complaint again to the king. Now the prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Ido, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem, in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Next to us. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtai, and Jeshua, the son of rose and began to rebuild the house of God that is in Jerusalem, and the prophets of God were with them. That means the building was based on God's word. No wonder. When your life is built, sister, can I talk to you for a minute? There'll be some decisions you'll have to make in the next few days. But be very careful that it'll be plumb line of the word of God. Even in every area, whether it's education, a relationship, whatever it is, plumb line. And when you do that, you're going to be blessed beyond you can imagine. Can I hear a voice of amen in the house? <laughs> the plumb line is needed. Because if you have the plumb line, if you're building according to what God spoke, what the word of God spoke, remember, it could be small today. It could be nothing today, but God can bring beauty out of it. The Holy Spirit is the seven eyes. Now, can, now, can we read? Now, Zechariah 4.10, it becomes clearer. Zechariah 4.10. But I want to bring another word. This is going to be the word for revival. If you're watching me in the United States, I believe California would be there, probably Houston. I want to bless you right now. Let the anointing come upon you as you're watching this. For who has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These sevens are the eyes of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit, according to Revelation 5, which range throughout the whole earth. You know what it means to understand this? The eyes are going to and fro the earth. Sam, would you stand up just to support me in this? You know, it's a representation, nothing else. When one man took the plumb line, according to what God spoke, the Lord started to move throughout the earth. To understand this language, it's found in 2 Chronicles 16.9. 2 Chronicles 16.9, for the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to give, to, another translate, to make himself 
made known as strong. Can you read from King James? For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. When one man took the plumb line, according to the word of God, God sent a move where he wanted to show himself strong. Can I say this with a lot of trust in God? A move of God will only happen when somebody takes the plumb. And can I say a prophetic revelation right now? I hope I don't use the word if. When Zion continues to walk, having the plumb line of God's word as a standard of any building, the Lord says, I will send a move. You will be doing it here, but a move is happening in Africa. You will be doing it here, a move is happening in Philippines. Can somebody say, some of you, if you take the plumb line, God is going to send a move that's going to touch people related to you across the globe, across the nations. If anybody can kind of support or agree with this, can you make yourself known with a gesture of praise in the house of the Lord? A plumb line in one man's hand, God says, I'm going to show myself strong across the globe. India will see the move of God. Africa will see the move of God. Europe will see the move of God. Asia will see the move of God. South America will see the move of God. Russia will see the move of God because somebody had a plumb line in his hand. Do you want a lifestyle because you obeyed God, because you held God's word precious, somebody connected to you, far away, gets delivered? Somebody related to you, beyond the reach of physical, you know, reach, gets touched because God is showing himself Strong, healer, deliverer, miracle worker. Let me tell you, when we pray here, God can do miracles in Australia. God can do miracles in other parts of the world. Some of you get ready, the next move of this church, and many people watching me right now, because you took the plumb line, God says, my spirit is going to move across the globe and show himself strong, show himself powerful. Let me tell you, when the Holy Ghost shows himself powerful, no power is a match for him. Sorcery will be defeated. Witchcraft will be broken. If anybody wants that kind of an anointing, make yourself known right now with a gesture, with a praise in your heart. Give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord because you took the plumb line. God is doing a miracle for somebody. I, I don't know why the Lord is asking me to pause there for a second. This is not just another point in my message. This is a prophetic word and I'm going to declare some of you get ready. The anointing just like what Moses had. When he lifted up his hand, the Amalekites started to get defeated. The Lord tells me to tell you, some of you are going to carry an anointing where you will be sitting in your bedroom and because the plumb line is in your hands, somebody who is about to be killed by the devil, somewhere across the globe, he is going to be delivered by an angel of the Lord. Can somebody who believes that make a noise because this is a revival no, you can do better. You can do better. Because I can sense an unction coming upon somebody. Oh. Power, 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 power. Sister, stand up please, stand up please. Right now, I'm declaring deliverance. No, 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 behind. De deliverance over your family back in India. Even the sister that you're praying for in the name of Jesus. The spirit that came and kind of a seclusion spirit, a depression spirit has to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a hallelujah in the house of this.
Is anybody who can join me because it's a revival moment? Is anybody that can join me? Even though it might not be directly connected to you, but you are affirming the word of God for the rest of the people that might be receiving the miracle. Can you join me? A spirit that came to snatch away our children is now being bound by the Holy Ghost. Some of you seated here are hearing stories of children being attacked by powers of darkness in the night. I am here to declare today the plumb line is breaking the bondage in the name of Jesus. Somebody give a Lord an amen. <laughs> children are coming back. You didn't hear me. I said, children are coming back. The plumb line of heaven. No wonder God said rejoice. Plumb line because of that. So can I announce it right now? In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, the spirit that came and brought isolation, seclusion, an attack, a demonic spirit. And one of the words says, the jackals were dancing in that place. The spirit that was dancing in your family. I'm here to announce, enough is enough. We are here to evacuate you forcefully because somebody took the plumb line and that has released the Holy Ghost upon the nations. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray. Right now, some of you will experience a move that's happening inside. Release it. If you want to open your mouth, open it. If you want to speak in tongues, speak. If you are led to declare something, declare it. Because your plumb line is releasing something across the globe. Across the globe. Across the globe. But this is not just about today. Some of you will carry the anointing. This church is entering a new phase. One move here, global miracles. One move here, somebody that we don't even know has been set free. And some of you are going to hear the testimonies. If you believe that God's spirit is running to and fro to show himself strong on behalf of those who trust who are committed to his word. If you believe that season has come, can you make some agreement for sake of a global move of God? Some. The plumb line of, line of confusion and the stone of emptiness. It's going to change. But this word in Hebrew is tohu. Tohu means something that is confusing, something that is without form, disorderly. And that word tohu singularly has been used many times in the Bible. But the word tohu wa bohu it's only used twice, twice, twice. Only twice in the Bible. And the passage that I read, Isaiah 34, 11, is the first time, or the, one of the times. And the other time is Genesis 1, 2. Genesis 1, 2. For I can sense, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, face of the water. Pastor Netram, if I may, could you stand up, Pastor? Just stand there. Because some anointing is getting released in this place. The word without form is a word tohu. Meaning confused. No shape. 
if anybody has got a life that defines or de de describes that, get ready for your miracle. The word void is bohu. But in Isaiah, it is the plumb line. Is that the story with creation? Yes. It's found in Psalm 19, verse number 4. Can you read from King James? Psalm 19, 4. How do you think this creation is holding itself? Their line is gone throughout the world. The word is plumb line. The whole creation, God has put it on a plumb line. And that was a creation. But because, how did it change then? How did this change? It is not God created confusion and God created emptiness. Because Isaiah 45, 18 says when he created, it was not void. That's Isaiah 45, 18 for you. But then how did it happen? I think it's found in, I think it's found in Isaiah 24, 5, I think. Isaiah 24, 5. Why did, why did this earth become what it is? The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants. Somebody staying there defiled it. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance. How many of you know your behavior can change the ordinances? Which means even weather can get affected. Because the behavior of people on the ground. Somebody said it is carbon dioxide or carbon thing. God's word says differently. It's your behavior that affected the seasons. Because you change the ordinance. I've always said people, please do not be, be very careful when you change ordinances. And broken the everlasting covenant because of that earth became void and shapeless. At that time it was not Adam and Eve, it was Satan, the angels, who did this. But let's go back. Oh, Pastor, I bless you as you sit there and receive the remaining of it. But I wanted you to identify. Can we go back to Genesis and then we'll close here with prayer. Genesis 1, 2. And the earth was without form, tohu, and void, bohu. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Three points I want to say quickly. You can go home and pray, pray. Number one, the word the Holy Spirit moved or the breath of God moved. Ruach Elohim moved. It, somebody said it's a mighty wind. It, what is happening? Everything that is in confusion. The word brooded, that's a word used only twice in the Bible, th three times. It's a word where a hen sits upon an eggs. Another word where an eagle flutters or wings over the nest. I don't want to go to the second one. I'll go to the first one. <laughs> you know what the Lord told me today? If your life is a life of confusion, disorder, and emptiness, here is the Holy Spirit started the work. How many of you know the baby will come out? The chicks will come out. But there needs to be an atmosphere where you know, I have been there, I grew up, sometimes I used to go visit my families that were from rural areas. We know that very soon the, we used to watch there, watch for the chicks to come out, little crack. But no chick comes out without adequately warmed up by the mother. And then it says, let there be. And I got a sense today that some of you on this day, the Holy Spirit has already taken over and is now created an atmosphere in your life for him to say, let it be. You have not seen the miracle as yet. 
but you experience the warmth of the Holy Spirit. It took nine months for Jesus to come out of Mary. But that nine months, the Holy Spirit was upon her. The same word from Genesis. The power of the Almighty overshadowed her. And the Lord told me, tell my people, even though they didn't see their miracle, the Holy Ghost was brooding for the miracle to peek out. Very soon, what you were praying for will put its head out. <laughs> Waiting under the Holy Spirit, trusting Him was not a mistake. Because the Word and the Spirit is coming together. Every time you received a word, the Holy Ghost was brooding, just like the eyes went to and fro. Every time you said, God, I receive it, line upon line, the Holy Spirit started to move. And the Lord told, told me to tell you, everything that you need for the creative part of your life, for new things to come out, the Lord has done the work already. The next few seconds, if anybody wants to stand up as receiving, not, not, it's not just to encourage me, only if you want to, because I'm not going to make you do that. The Holy Ghost started to brood. The work is now getting underway. I don't know how many days he did that, but his only desire is you will not be confused with no form and emptiness. But is anybody in this place who believes? Because of the Holy Spirit, my life will have purpose and will never be empty. Only such people can you give a grateful, not because of me, because of him, because of the Holy Ghost, my life will have purpose. My life will have design. My life will have connections. My life will not be just a jumble or, 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 or a kind of, a, you know, something, what is the word? Hurdled together. It'll have design. It'll have contour. It'll have correct shape because the Holy Spirit is doing that. Come on, hallelujah. I welcome the Holy Ghost here. I welcome the Holy Spirit here. Is there a church that has a plumb line? Is there somebody who believes God's word is my measurement in my life? If you can say that, can you say yes? Somebody, somebody who wants your life to be led by the Holy Ghost and the word of God. Give a Lord a praise in the house of God. Something beautiful is happening. Pray, 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 pray. Without form. And the Holy Ghost started the work. And the Lord told me three things he's going to do. Are you ready? Number one, the Holy Ghost has done that. Number two, the next word that God says is separate. I want everybody to understand this truth. The answer for God or from God to deal with your confusion or disorder is separation. Oh, you didn't get that. Because everything gets mixed up. And as long as it's mixed up, it is confused. So what God will do, whenever he does a work of bringing order, he will separate. Why does he do that? For example, when the world was now in a place of confusion and no, it looks so disorderly and ugly and, and so bad, God said, Noah, out. Abraham out because you know how God does his work to bless a family he will separate somebody from that family 
To heal a family, he will separate somebody from that family. He will separate water from water, darkness from light, and, and ground from water, because that's the way confusion will be settled. And I'm being led by the Lord to tell you, some of you standing here are the ones that God has chosen from your family to bring order. You said, God, why did you choose me? God said, I separated you from among your relatives so through you I can bring order. God said, separate unto me. And I was hearing this word for the last few weeks, a few days. The blessing fell upon the one who was separated from his brothers. His name is Joseph. Because God needs somebody in order to bring a nation, to bring. And let me tell you, right now, I wish I could come and shake hand with each one of you watching me, listening to me, and watching me online. You are the one that God has separated through the Holy Spirit to bring order in some difficult situations. Through you, disorder will be brought to order. Chaos will become beauty. Come on, chaos will become promise. If somebody can receive that, that call of God on your life, that, that anointing of God on your life, can you make some movement in the house? You are the one that God has called as a Joseph, as an Abraham. Come on, hallelujah. As somebody that God has separated from others in order to show that he can bring order into your family. Can somebody say, Tohu is over? <sighs> can somebody get this assignment from heaven? The one with the plumb line. Young people watching me, if you're single today, I have to say this. God will pick you from everybody else for his purpose. And through that, by the work of the Holy Ghost, he is going to bring separation. And can I say some of you watching me right now is God's ambassador of this order, of this new beginning. If you want that to be your life, can I ask you right now to make a genuine response of a praise to God that he has called you from everybody else for sake of touching somebody and bring order to somebody. Can you make a noise of agreement? That's your call. That's your call. So the Holy Ghost, separation, Anybody in this place, how many of you know the word church means? Ecclesia. A people separated from everybody else for a purpose. That's called church. You're not among everybody. He's called you out to show his glory. So can I declare on the count of three, can you receive it? You are God separate, God separated one in order to bring order, to bring design, not only for you, but people that you will come in touch with. How many of you know you're carrying a Joseph anointing? You're carrying a Dan. If you believe that, I want some of you to make hell tremble by a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. You are not ordinary. Come on. Can you rejoice in the Lord? You are an ambassador to bring order. Wherever you go, there will be order. Wherever you step in, there will be order. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Rakala Bashi. And then the Lord says, let the sea fill. Let the sky fill. Let the earth fill. Let me tell you, the second word is going to be dealt with, void. Now it's going to be filling. And I'm here to say, Tohu will be cancelled. Your life will be a life of design and beauty. And bohu, meaning the emptiness, is going to be over. Because I hear thunder in my spirit. God saying to somebody, let it fill. Let it fill. 
let it fill. If you believe that your life will be full of God's blessing, God's goodness and presence, can you make it known right now with an agreement in the house of the Lord? Somebody, somebody, this is special. Oh, Rabba Kashantala, Rabba Shante. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray right now. You know what I did today? I didn't want to preach much because I wanted you to go home and receive it on your own. Tohu bohu. All you need to do, the plumb line. Can I bless you right now? Anybody in this place who wants no tohu bohu, but a life of purpose and a life filled. Not filled with the devil. How many of you know the Bible says there was a man who was delivered from the devil and his house became empty? You know what happened? He brought seven more demonic powers. In your life, voidness will not bring the devil. You'll be filled with the goodness of the Lord. So can I, for those of you who want a special breakthrough right now, can you lift up your hand wherever you are? Tohu, bohu, I cancel it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So if you want that to be alive, number one, do you really understand what I'm trying to say? There will be order, confusion, no disarray. Everything will be connected to everything. You know, it's not like one is good and the other one. It'll be a proper kind of a tapestry of God's design. If you want that to be your life, can you say yes right now? Can you say yes? But will you take the plumb line? Will you align your life with the word of God, with the plan of God, with the purpose of God? Line upon line, precept upon precept. Can you say yes right now? Come on, somebody. And number two, do you want God to fill your life? Let God says, let the sky be full. Let the earth be full. Let the ocean be full. Let me tell you, you're going to see swarms of creatures coming out of nowhere because God is filling your life. Your emptiness is over. Your life of emptiness is over. Can somebody say yes in the name of Jesus? So lift up your hand, let me pray right now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Could you come up, you know, Yari, can join me on the platform. Let me bless my people, even watching me online, and people will be watching in the days to come. Would you please lift up your hand wherever you are? Can you declare today, because of the word of God, my life will be a life of meaning and full. Can you say that as loud as you can? Because, say it, say it. Because of God's word. Come on, say it loudly. My life will be a life of meaning and the fullness of God. Come on, full of God, full of his blessing. Come on, speak it out in the name of Jesus. Now, can you add another word? Because of the Holy Spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit in the days to come. New things are going to come out. Breakthroughs are coming out. Things that were promised are coming out. Come on, somebody pray, 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 pray. Can you repeat this? Can you repeat this? Because I don't want you to go home and just, you know, get some points. I want you to repeat your faith right now in the name of Jesus. Because line upon line. You know what, what means? When God says something, you draw on it. You repeat it. You say the same thing. Can you say it in the name of Jesus? And tell the devil, enough is enough. My life will not, not be a life of seclusion. My life will not be a life of isolation. My life will not be a life of depression. It will be connected to the purposes of God. There will be shadows. Clouds of joy in the tens of the righteous. Come on, pray, pray. Speak it out, speak it out, speak it out. Pray, pray. I want some of your voice to be heard in the house. If a prophet can say, sow, cow, sow, cow, some of you need to speak words that may not make sense to somebody around you, but God is hearing your prayer. God is listening to your amen. God is understanding what you're trying to say. Speak it out, speak it out. As I love you, Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. I want fathers to release your word. Mothers to release your word. The attack on the children, the attack of demonic powers in the night, let it be completely terminated right now in the name of Jesus. 
Your house is not a house of jackals and owls and melancholy creatures. Creatures that are of depression. There will be shouts of joy. There will be the presence of God. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Can somebody sound that name Jesus? Because there's power in that name. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. The eggs are hatching, the eggs are hatching, eggs are hatching, some cracking is happening. In the name of Jesus, the shells have become more softer. In the name of the Lord, it's coming out. It's coming out in the name of the Lord. Because the Holy Ghost has already warmed your life for the next move. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. We discard all by faith in you, Lord. By trusting in your grace, acknowledging your goodness in our lives, we right now reject the line of confusion and the stone of emptiness. But we receive the line that is based on the word of God and the stone with seven eyes full of the Holy Ghost. We receive that over our life. And today, when people go back home, there will be stories of miracles. As a servant, I announce into the atmosphere. I receive that word on behalf of me and people connected to me. That in the days to come, just because of one man holding the plumb line, the Spirit of God will be unleashed throughout the earth, throughout the land. Nations will be set free. People are going to be set free. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. We thank you for this, a new journey for our church, new journey for your people. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and everybody said, 